Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name is Justin. So today I'm going to be doing a full in-depth review on the Gava G9 series of electronic drums. I've played all the different versions, but Gava specifically lent me one of their review units of the L6 series to make this video. Now, if you live in the United States, there's a decent chance you haven't heard of Gava until very recently. That's because they're a very large distributor of musical instruments, but in Europe, not the United States. They've been quietly working on an electronic drum line for years now, though, uh, in partnership with brands like Remo, DW, and also DDT. And this is the culmination of that. This is their first ever electronic drum set. And the interesting thing is the way they've sort of positioned it. They're trying to go head to head against the very best in the electronic drum industry at the very highest end of the price range. And the question is, do they pull it off? So first of all, the cymbals come in 14 and 14 for the crashes, the ride cymbal is 18 inches across, and the hi-hat is the same as the crash, but it also has a bottom piece of plastic to make it a two-piece 14-inch pair of hi-hats. For the toms, the sizes are 10 by 5, 12 by 5, 12 by 5, 14 by 5, and then the snare is 14 inches across as well. The kick drum is 18 inches across and is suspended on its back legs and also a riser that your pedal connects to. All of the toms and snare are using a two zone triggering system. That's kind of like a, I guess you would call it like a basket design that's suspended from the rim of the drum. All of the drums are dual zone and all of the cymbals are triple zone even the crash cymbals. When you hit on the bell of the crash cymbals, it is picking up your playing, but because there's no sample for the bell on the crashes, there is no sound. But strangely enough, they omitted the bell from the crashes, but implemented a bell sound for the hi-hats. Now, by the way, Gaba uses a one cable design to get those three zones from their cymbals, but they also have a second input on the back of the cymbal. So if you wanna buy these cymbals and use them on a Roland or a Lesis Strike type module, you can get a three zone configuration working with third party brands. Moving over to the mesh heads, these are made by Remo. As you guys know, Remo and Roland don't have that tight of a partnership anymore, so we've started seeing Remo making mesh heads for other companies, including NuX and now Gava. This is a two-ply, very light construction that is apparently modeled to sort of feel like Remo ambassador heads. So they're kind of light and springy, they don't like have a heavy feel to them. Okay, so now that we got all the specs out of the way, now let's jump into the pros and cons of the drum set as I see it. Some of the stuff it does right and some of the stuff that I don't like quite as much. First of all, the drum set looks great, especially in person. You can really see the wood grain. It looks awesome. This L6 line of drums is great. The C series also looks pretty nice too. It's got like a carbon fiber drum wrap sort of look to it that looks really cool in person. It actually looks pretty much identical to the PDP line of carbon fiber finished shells. The cymbals are using this kind of gum rubber on them that feels pretty nice. I like the feeling of these cymbals and I also really like how large the bell zone is on that ride. A lot of times electronic drum companies all use these tiny little bell zones that are easy to miss. But with this one, there's no possible way to miss that bell zone. The hi-hats also have a satisfying feel to them. Having that bottom piece of plastic as the, the bottom symbol makes the symbols feel more stable as you're playing on them. I like the fact that they teamed up with Remo to make the mesh heads because Remo makes very nice mesh heads. These are a little bit thinner than I prefer, but the quality of them is very good. Okay, so I wanna take a second here to clear up some confusion about the hardware. Uh, if you live in the United States, you're going to be getting Gibraltar hardware, individual stands for the most part. I don't think uh, you're gonna be getting actual drum racks. And if you're in Germany or if you're anywhere in Europe, you're probably gonna be getting a version of the drum set that has the same pads, but the hardware is going to be DWE hardware. Now, the reason why the hardware is different between United States and Europe uh, Gava drum sets is that Gava has the distribution rights to DW hardware in Europe, but not the United States. So it's causing some confusion, but it all comes down to distribution rights. Now the module stand situation is kind of interesting. 
It's mounted on this like U-shaped piece of metal and you can position it up and down and from side to side. It works perfectly fine. It's just a kind of interesting, I've never seen any other module mounted on a piece of hardware quite like this. Just be sure to really crank it down because it could slide one way or the other if you're not careful. One last thing that I like about the kick drum is that they have a little cutout there on the bottom so that you can get your pedal a little bit closer. Because this is an 18 inch kick drum, it's suspended in the air by its front legs and then this bottom riser that your pedal clips to. If you don't have that little cutout in the bottom rim, your pedal can't get quite as close to the drum head as if you were actually clipping on to the bottom rim. And you wanna suspend it because it's 18 inches across and if you don't suspend it, your beater can't be you know, at its normal height. So with this little cutout, you can still get your pedal close to the kick drum shell while also having it suspended off the ground. It's a nice little touch. Okay, so the drums look great. They're using nice sensors inside of the drums. They're using nice mesh heads and they're using nice stands or nice drum racks depending on where you live in the world. What are the downsides of the pads specifically though? There are some downsides here. The first is that all the cymbals have hot spots. There are geometric patterns on the front of the cymbals, which looks kind of nice. It's like being futuristic without being too in your face. But unfortunately, if you play on those specific points of the cymbal, you'll get a very loud trigger spike and then if you move to the right an inch or to the left of that spot an inch, all of a sudden it's very quiet. Here's an example of it. It reminds me a lot of the Simmons SD1200 ride cymbal where it had a very similar problem. They need to fix this in the next version of the cymbals whenever those come out. Something else weird about these cymbals are the two marks on each bell. I believe it's from the manufacturing process, but Geva is the only company that leaves those marks visible for some reason. Now, as far as the drum side of things, I don't have any complaints about the triggers or the mesh heads or anything like that. The only thing that I really wish was different is that the foam core inside of the kick drum, if they use something a little bit more dense, it would make the kick drum slightly less bouncy. What they're using, it has a lot of coverage, but it's so light and foam. It's like a, like a memory pillow if you press on it. If they use something a little bit denser, the kick drum wouldn't be quite as bouncy. The next thing to mention is the rim silencers. I really like the look of them. They don't cover the entire drum, but they're a tad too small. They only cover it like one quarter of the drums and they're not very silencing. You're not actually getting a very large decibel decrease. What you're doing is removing some of the higher frequencies. So it sounds a little bit less annoying, but it's not actually quieter. On the snare, you get two of these rim silencers, one for the cross stick and then one for doing rim shots with your left or right hand. You can position them how you want. But the problem for me is that I like doing rim shots with both hands and it doesn't have complete coverage. So I'll be doing a rim shot with my left hand and then hitting just the regular part of the rim with my right hand. And even if you take that top rim silencer and shift it down, well, that fixes the problem of doing rim shots with both hands, but now your cross stick will be louder than it should be because it's hitting an exposed piece of metal. So while I really like the look of these quarter sized rim silencers, it doesn't make any sense for the snare specifically. You can get away with it on the toms though. Okay, so now let's cover the module specs. 
You've got 14 drum and cymbal inputs. You get right and left outputs that are labeled as monitor outs. You get XLR connections. You get eight direct outs, plus an extensive internal routing inside of the module to decide what sound goes where. You've got a mix in port, an SPDIF stereo port, which I think maybe three people in the world will end up using. You get classic five pin MIDI ports, plus USB MIDI as well. There's a foot switch input, which you can use to change kits with your feet or maybe drop the virtual clutch of your hi-hat. There's a thumb drive USB input on the back and the module actually comes with a thumb drive with the Gava logo included in the box as well. And when you're unboxing the module, on the bottom, you actually notice an entire pile of different cables for every country on earth. The module comes with 400 sounds, a built-in recorder, sample import, a lot of different effects, compatibility with Roland, Alesis, and Yamaha pads. The module also has like 100 gigabytes of empty space. There's a unique cable management system that's like this big long Velcro sleeve. It seems kind of odd at first, but actually after you set it all the way up, it makes a lot of sense and makes the space a whole lot more clean and tidy. The cables are incredibly high quality. They have a satisfying sound as you plug them into the drums and cymbals, and I don't think they're gonna break anytime soon. And they should be nice because if you have to buy a whole set of them separately, they're $150. Okay, so let's dive into the interface of the module. So you got an avatar of the drum set you can play on and adjust things silently. You can adjust your headphone volume, master, monitor, and mix inputs in the metronome speed right here. There's a built-in mixer. You can control the toms and cymbals together grouped or separately. This is what I call the easy mode of the module. You can go through the different kits, scroll like an iPad, sort by category right here. You can adjust the metronome. You can adjust the volume, stuff like that. To go to the more advanced stuff, you press the gear icon, and now you have a bunch of different modes here. You've got performance, kit editor, effects, trigger settings, general settings, and then this tool menu. But basically this brings you into their set list editor. You can have kit one, kit five, kit 30, kit 50. You can order them however you want if you're playing live. One interesting thing that it can do is it has a PDF reader right here. And so if you have some sort of technical thing you want to play, but you don't want to have a dedicated piece of sheet music next to your drum set, you can load it directly into the module. Although this is kind of small because you're reading on a section of a 10 inch screen, but it's nice to have. Performance mode is basically a more in-depth version of the main screen. You see a few more things like a in-depth metronome control where you can adjust like the time signature and interval. You also can adjust the metronome sound. Most of them are very harsh sounds, so I stick with metro. And there's a visual mode that counts down on screen. There's also a song player. You can speed up a song or slow it down, but you can also A-B loop a section of a song that's especially hard too. Inside of Kit Editor, you can do all the things that you would expect. So if you tap on the name of the drum, you can go through a whole list of sounds and sort by category. You can also layer in a second sound under Second Sound Edit, which is nice. You can mix effects. You got your sound edits, like tuning and stuff like that. Your attack and release times, which are very important. You also get your EQ. So you can adjust whatever your snare or kick drum sound is right here in the three band configuration. Inside of compressor settings, you can either get one from the list, load in your own, or you can just sort of adjust your own with like adjusting the, the ratio, the attack, the threshold, and the release time. Over in the effects menu, you have like your reverbs, your multi-effects, your instrument reverb, and also your ambience. They also let you adjust all the sends of everything. It's very, very in-depth. As you can see, this has positional sensing and you have your trigger curves. For some reason, they've decided to set everything up with a very aggressive trigger curve. In the manual, they say it helps you get the full dynamic range, but I feel like they're very aggressive, and I actually just set everything to linear when I set up the drum set for the first time. Inside of general settings, I kind of like some of the stuff here. For example, you have compressor and EQ on your master channel, your headphones get their own EQ and compression, monitor outs, and here's your, your foot switch stuff. The routing information is very cool in the way it's laid out. It's a grid. So if I want the click only to go to my headphones, I deselect that and I'm done with the routing. 
And over here in routing drums, this is where you can control like the direct outs. You can update straight from the module because Wi-Fi is enabled. You don't have to find a thumb drive and then go to gava.com and download a zip file and then extract the files and then plug it back into your module. All you have to do is press update and it finds the update. There's also an online store under tools and then online store. My internet down here is not great, so I can't show you the online store, but if you wanna buy more stuff, you can look right there. Now let's talk about some of the issues I've had with this module because it has a lot of rough edges. The module is very laggy. When you're doing stuff, everything just takes a split second longer than it should, and it seems like the CPU is underpowered or the software isn't optimized. Let me show you what I'm talking about in a couple of ways. Starting with the metronome, let's adjust the scan time. It shouldn't be lagging the metronome because it has to think so hard to change the scan time. By the way, this is in tenths of a millisecond, not milliseconds. Now look about the animation of my fader and over here and over here. It's having trouble keeping up. I'm not sure how well it comes across on camera, but it does not look smooth. If this was on an iPad, it actually would look a whole lot more smooth. I kind of wish that the drum set changed colors as you move between kits. Like as I go to basic rock, I wish that turned it into a blue kit and then a red kit and then a white kit just to change it up. It never actually changes. Also, if I have a China or a splash, it would be nice for these symbols to change as well. Also, the animations are just kind of ugly. So look, if I hit the drum a lot, you see this weird wiping animation that has this jagged line across from it. The next thing is that the buttons are tiny. There's so much empty space here that could bring this, the button all the way down to here and have a giant target for me to press, especially the mixer. It should be easy to press on the mixer. It's not some sort of weird, obscure setting. The Mimic has a screen even smaller than this one, but the buttons and, and text are just larger. So they're using their real estate in a more tablet-like way than the way this is designed. Because they have so much information, there are less menus. But because they only have a couple of menus, they have to cram a lot of information. And in order to do that, the text is tiny and the buttons are very, very tiny. And you'll just accidentally miss stuff when you're pressing on things. Something else that's kind of irritating about the module is the fact that it requires a password. And that's fine for security reasons. I don't want some sort of kid in the audience playing Event Sevenfold through my drum set during the middle of a concert. But the downside is they don't actually show the password anywhere and they don't let you change it. You have to find that information in the manual and memorize the code and then put it in your phone. And what's the good of a password if you can't change it? Because if everybody has the same password, then the security isn't actually there. Thankfully, they could fix that in a software update. But the core problem I have at the heart of this $2,500 drum module is the triggering engine inside. The fact of the matter is, even though it has lots of settings to adjust, okay, it has most of the settings I could want, it's not a very advanced module when it comes to guessing what's a correct hit and what's a faulty hit. Modules that outperform this module when it comes to triggering include Alesis, F-Note, ATV, Roland, Yamaha, this module is not punching in its weight class when it comes to trigger accuracy. Now you can massage the settings and get this module working perfectly usable, but you have to make all the settings adjustments yourself and you have to work at them. I've spent way too much time in this menu wrestling with the pads, trying to get them not to double trigger and work properly. It's something that becomes a little bit irritating. You can give the module more time to make a more accurate guess by adjusting things like scan time and stuff, but it's still bad at making the guesses. Okay, so now let's pivot to talk about overall sound quality and the number of sounds in the module. So first of all, this module launches with 400 sounds, and if you want more, you can download them from the sound store or import some of your own. That's what you would kind of expect out of like a TD-17, you know, your average five or $800 module. But unfortunately, this module costs $2,500. So it's right up there with the Roland TD-50X as one of the most expensive modules on the entire market. Now let's talk about the overall sound quality. I think the strongest kits in the module are generally jazz based. Uh, they just 
sound really nice. They're wide open, they ring out, they sound very natural. And also I like some of the symbol selection of sounds in the module as well. But on the other side of things, I feel like a lot of the rock and funk kits just don't sound that natural to me. I feel like they've really heavily processed the sounds with a lot of compression, a lot of EQ, in a way that I don't necessarily love. A lot of the sounds are just very, very bright and very, very harsh. They don't really line up with what I want my personal drum sounds to sound like. This is a personal opinion thing though. Some people love the sounds of the G9. They're just not quite to my taste though. I can't really give any updates on the paid sounds because I did not buy any for this review, but just keep in mind there are also more sounds you do have access to through the online store, very similar to what ATV does. Okay, so now that you know the specs of all the drums, you know the pros and cons of the module and the pads, now let's talk about the whole range of the G9 series. So here are the five drum sets. The C series has carbon fiber finished shells. The L series have the wood grain shells, and they're a thousand bucks apart. If you want the wood grain look, you have to spend an extra thousand dollars to get that. And the Studio 5 is like its own thing. It seems to be made from the ground up to compete against the TD50K and now the TD50K too because the TD50K was just updated. So it's got some pad based toms, but it still has the same cymbals, same snare, same kick drum, same module. Which one is worth buying? Well, I personally would stay away from the L series because $7,000 is way too much for the level that they're at right now. The C series makes a little bit more sense, but I feel like what you should actually look at if you feel like Geva is the company for you would probably be the up and coming G5 series. At $4,000, you're still getting all the same drums, all the same cymbals, but what you're sort of losing out on is the touchscreen and a few of the module editing parameters. But the G5 series is much more promising out of their lineup, and it's what I would personally look at if you wanna buy into the Gava ecosystem. Have an amazing day, guys. See you all in a few.